Good evening, campers. It's me, and we are going to start off extremely strong today. Get yourself a copy of Tears of a Comsomol Girl by Audrey Shash. This is a well-produced book. I'm going to leave a link down below. There's no affiliates. You can't buy it anywhere bar direct from the publisher. This is expensive. I'm not going to lie. This is an expensive book. I think it cost me like 30 quid. It took me a while to kind of take the plunge, but I, I'm going to be honest. Uh, this naked leather uh, the hardback is beautiful. The paper is like really thick and like slightly glossy. This is just like an absolute delight to have, uh, especially as Carolina and Martin who compose this um put art they put um interviews in with the authors it's really like a talking point I, I had this up in a recent um what i bought haul and the amount of people who were like hey what were the um what were those naked hardbacks like can you tell me a bit more about them um so cle people are clearly interested in it i get the price is high but trust me don't buy three books that you're not going to read Put that money together and get this one, because this... Ooh, oh, Kieran, I'm quite happy to spend all my hard-earned money on this book, but, but tell me, what, what, what's it about? What is this about? I would propose that the short answer is the death of Arena, who is this person, and this person is Audrey Chash. She posed for all the photos in here. It's, it's about the death of arena i suppose another answer would be that this is about her murderer andre chikatillo who was a notorious serial killer in russia in the 1980s and how arena and chikatillo meet one night wait let me jump in i think before we discuss any further who's andre chikatillo they call him the nightmare the ripper According to certain unsubstantiated rumours, detectives charged with investigating the maniac's brutal crimes refer to him in code as a certain Citizen X. At least that's what I've been told. But in my mind, he is, and always will be, simply Satan. A former school teacher who confessed to the murder of more than 50 young people in the Soviet Union, the youngest of his victims being Igor Gudkov, who was seven years old. Chikatilo was a monster, with strangling and stabbing not being enough, he sought to defile his victims, mutilating their bodies, eviscerating them. He was known to practice necrophilia and cannibalism. Еще с девятого класса, когда Сталин умер, я уже готов был принять от Сталина это все, это самое наследство быть генсеком этой партии, это все мирового коммунистического движения. Можно, можно страшный вопрос. Страшный да. Вы знаете, вот мне попадались книжки вот эта Анжелика попадались, понимаете? Вот. И вы знаете, и в это самое, и эти, как видеофильмы эти сексуальные, я там, я не нашел, они меня не увлекают, не увлекают, понимаете, меня вот это общество политическое все увлекает. Я вот восхищался философией марксистско-ленинской, как все там э, стройно и как все логично, все три источника, три основные части марксизма, ленинизма, я все изучал, я конспектировал все 55 там, томов. Ленина проштудировал, четыре университета марксизма, ленизма закончил в разных городах, разные факультеты международных отношений и пропагандистский парку актива там и все это самое, разные факультеты. Chikatilo began murdering in December 1978. It would not be until November 1990, nearly 12 whole years, until he was arrested. Within Shash's novel, we meet the butcher of Rostov and witness, along with Irina, the final moments as she longingly gazes at a blaze flickering in the forest. He was executed by a single gunshot on February the 16th, 1994. I suppose another answer is that this is nothing to do with Chikatilo because Chikatilo doesn't even appear for most 
of this. Not even there's Arena in some way, because Arena's narrating this after she died. But I suppose another answer would be that it's not really about Arena. It's about Russia in the 1980s during the rise of Brezhnev. I suppose this book is discussing the legacy of Lenin's regime and the rise of the Bolsheviks. It's, it's definitely a political novel to some degree. I suppose this book is about structures and hierarchies and how when you put people in systems where they are suppressed, they look for violent, perverse means in order to give themselves some freedom from those structures. I suppose it's a novel about personal sacrifice, what we have to give up in order to better someone else and how Arena is trying to understand why she might need to make personal sacrifices. I suppose what I'm getting at here is that this is a difficult novel to, to pin down. Shas's writing is experimental, it's surrealist, and oh no, we said surreal and experimental, and people are going to start freaking out. Let's all take a deep breath. Let's calm down. Despite what you think, as you break the spine of this book, as it lashes out, spits blood and chokes on its own miasma, Shash's novel is effortless. It's easy to read, despite this being difficult content. If you're still scratching your head, this is like the literary equivalent of Ice Peak, a Russian electronic act, um, of which, rather than me trying to explain to you who Ice Peak are if you've never heard them, here's Plak Plak. <laughs> I can think of describing very succinctly what's going on in this book in regards to, like its aesthetic, its mood, its tension, the, the ambiance. I think I've given you an idea of how this book feels to, to read, but we're going to be following the recently deceased or currently dying arena through the microcosm that is Rostov, her hometown, the place that she's born, bred, and is looking to leave in some way. And Everyone in this novel is looking for an out. They're looking for something to liberate them. Be that a reader's mother who finds by giving her daughter the education that she needs, that she will be able to be the musician that she should be, which is why Arena is in the Rostov School of Music. For Arena's dads, it's his debaucherous escapades. For the Russian soldiers, it's drink. I guess the argument could be made that Chikatilo, the notorious serial killer, liberates himself through violating women because in a system that is so suppressive, in a communist regime where you are meant to be one, not an individual, Chikatilo becomes an individual by making himself known. That doesn't feel good to say, but I suppose it's true. Everyone's looking to be an individual. Everyone's trying to find something that makes them them. And for Arena, she uses the system. She uses her status 
as a Komsomol girl in order to be free, in order to roam the streets, in order to pleasure herself with the drunken soldiers. Sex is a currency. It gets arena places. It, it gets her noticed. And arena's very comfortable in sex and using sex and the power that sex has. This book is sexually explicit rather than pornographic, but I'll be honest, Lenin with a nine inch penis was not what I was expected to read. Quickly, quickly, find the tangent. Uh, what, what is a Komsomol girl? Let's discuss. Hello, welcome to my TED talk. We're going to discuss today, what is Komsomol? This is Komsomol written in the Cyrillic, which Russian people use. Now what's interesting about Cyrillic, which is something I didn't know, is that these O's are actually really deceptive because if they're stressed, they are O's, which we would assume in English. However, if they are unstressed, like this one, it actually turns into an A. So technically, we should be saying Komsomol. How fun! Komsomol or Komsomol, if you default to the English pronunciation, was it actually emblazoned on anything? What you would have instead is, this is what Komsomol members would wear. Now, you might look at this and think, oh gosh, what does that mean? But quite simply, it's the VL. Honestly, you tell the kids just to put the lids back on. This is V L K S M. This stands for... Oh, why? This is, I apologise to every single Russian speaker out there, the Viste Soyuznei Leninsky Komunistiskyi Soyuz Molodeji. But really all you need to know is Kom, Sir, Mal. Well, that was easier, wasn't it? Kom, Sir, was the Communist Youth League and anyone could join Kom, Sir, from the ages of 14 to 28. Komsomol at one point in history was voluntary. You did have to write a letter to be a part of Komsomol. However, that does mean that at one point it was compulsory. This 14 year age gap is really important because some universities or some careers would not even allow you entry, would not even like consider you unless you were part of Komsomol. And the further up you went into Komsomol and became a leader, the higher up the Communist Party you would go. Gorbachev was a college leader of Komsomol, say with Boris Yeltsin, which is funnily enough because Boris is actually an unstressed O, so it's technically Boris. The more you know, hey kids? Going back to this, you probably noticed this, Lenin. And Lenin set this uh, Komsomol began in 1918, a year after the October Revolution, and it ended in 1991, just short of the fall of the Soviet Union. Can we just marvel at how high-tech that TED Talk was? Very impressed myself. Totally didn't knock that up in five minutes. I know what you're thinking. Was any of that information useful, necessary, or relevant. Probably. What we can see is that the Komsomol was established back in Lenin's time and Sasha's book is based in the 1980s and we are so far removed from what Lenin had in store for communism, let alone his own ideals. Komsomol therefore is just a means to an end and how Arena is going to circumnavigate, use her position and power and status within Komsomol in order to get her own means in order to get where she wants to be she has to exploit the internal system in order to express externally arena wants to see where she can push the boundaries how far can she go before someone tells her to stop and when she does stop is when she meets chikatillo now throughout this novel chikatillo is killing and the further we go the more boundaries that are pressed upon pressure exerted on certain points has a breaking point. It might feel as though you're trying to break through a glass ceiling, but just give it a little push and it slashes like a knife. Chikatilo's murders become more frenzied, more torturous, the more Rina is trying to assert her own importance and own self-resilience within Russia. A question I think Sasha's trying to answer is how far can you push someone down before they decide to violently 
fight back against it. Maybe Chikatilo was thinking that as well. Ну, как раз все мое детство пришло, это на военные, на голодные годы, так что мы там только лишь бы пухлые ходили, жаль бы выжить, какие там глазки. А дальше была голодовка, период у нас, тем более там на Украине, это же вот, на Болтавской области там же поставили этот монумент, жертвам голода там 20 миллионов, где вот, искусственно созданных голодовок 33 года 47 -го. я вот это в 33 году моего старшего брата степана съели во время голода люди еды съели схватили люди голодные отчаявшись его съели и мать меня все время предупреждала не выходи со двора то говорит, степана сели тебя сидят вот я в бур бурьянетом калачики ел этим питался и мать это зари до зари в колхозе тогда хотя она больна не считали с болезнью это придет кусок черного какой-то жмыха там принесет хлеба это а то мы тем и питались, ну, в бурьянах там и лазили, там все это. Ну, или на замок там дома закроет это все там. Topics themselves aren't easy, but it's juxtaposed with how accessible Sasha's prose is. For me, this is a solid 9 out of 10, and I would be more than happy to read Sasha's other work. This is what happens when experimental literature hits the nail on the head.